Perfect. Okay, great. Well, let's get going without any further ado. Again, this is Jonathan with uh, Ivo Live. I just want to walk um, through a couple housekeeping items for anybody that has just joined us. I'd like to do that for the first five minutes of uh, each one of these webinars because we are constantly adding new uh, users to the platform, which is great. So uh, for these live webinars, speaking of, this is the best way to access them. When you log into your dashboard, you'll be able to click on that uh, flashing join button, which will take you to this uh, calendar software. You'll see what the next upcoming webinar is. Um, so you can see next week we'll be covering, uh, we'll be back on a Tuesday and we'll be covering uh, volatility, implied volatility charts. Uh, we'll also cover technical analysis. So we do have you know limited spacing on these things. So it's always a smart idea to register early as possible. Um, and then we also have our concierge here, our, our friendly green and white man, and he will uh, walk you through some of the you know key icons and shortcuts to use the platform. These are our most popular tools. Um, I've Alive, which we'll spend most of our time in today. Stock Sentiment Analyzer, PL Calculator, Real Time Spread Scanner, Data Download, and Daily Updates. Uh, so this gives you a little bit more information on all of those. We also recently added a shortcut over here for calculators um, that I'll show today. You can expand, contract any of those views when you see these chevrons. Uh, so that's nice and handy. And then for anything, any questions, whether it's Ivo Live, whether it's um, data, we did just launch uh, a new API product, which is nice, um, you know, for back testing. So any kind of questions on, on data or the service we're at support at iVolatility.com. Uh, so today we're going to focus on running scans, um, which means it's less important to have ideas kind of going into the trading session. Uh, a lot of times if we're looking at, you know, charts or if we're looking at, um, you know, other features, right? Like the, the P&L calc, uh, it's important to already have an idea in mind, but when you're running scans, Scans can actually help us create ideas. So we'll, we'll spend most of our time doing that today. Um, but what's great about this dashboard is it always gives you kind of some high level tidbits of what's going on in the market. Um, also, you'll see where we have our news and research. Uh, and this is where this kind of area is where we, you know, give you um, our views kind of on the market, things that we're looking at. Last week, we focused on oil. Um, so, you know, this is a really, really cool starting point to always, you know, look for ideas. In this case, it was on ExxonMobil, um, which we can, if we have time, we can highlight today. Um, so I always enjoy going to that area for, you know, inspiration. And then you'll also find, um, in this section, different updates. So here's where we talked about, you know, we created a standalone icon for calculators, uh, and then we walked through how to use it. We also uh, went through the updates in our column settings. Um, which is what we'll focus on today when we run our scan. So, you know, another really good um, area. So without further ado, I will jump into Ivo Live. You'll notice uh, if you've been with us a long time, you'll notice some updates. You know, we like to always make kind of incremental improvements based on uh, feedback that we receive. And so, you know, there's two different ways to think about the stock monitor right, is you have these preset scans, which we've built in for you. And then you have the ability to run custom scans depending on your, you know, specific and, and personal trading style. So a couple of things you'll notice from left to right as well, I have a bunch of stock monitor tabs pulled up. And this is a key point, you don't need um, just one, you can just hit this plus icon. And you can add as many stock monitor tabs as you want. And then you can drag it over. And the reason why I have multiple is because I have each one doing different things for me, each one running different scans. Um, so if we just start off at, at a basic level, right, what we want to do is anytime we're in Ivo Live, the idea is to generate actionable trading ideas, right? Ivo Live is like, you know, the brain and the data powering um, my options trades. So what we'll do is any given session, I like to create a new group name. So I like I like to put it by date so it's easy for me to follow. And I'll do stock monitor uh stock mon scans. So 923 921.23 stock monitor. That's as many characters as I can use. So now I have this group. 
So this group is empty. So the idea is, is to fill this up with my top names, you know, by the end of the session. So right now we're starting off with a blank slate, which is totally fine. Uh, and then let's go through the preset scans and then we'll do um, some custom scans. So top stocks by volumes, probably one of the most popular ones that anybody clicks on. Uh, what this does is it shows you the top names within a specific grouping uh, by options volume. That's what OV stands for. OIC stands for option open interest. And then last price stands for the last price of the stock. So, and again, you can kind of just hover over these columns and most columns will give you a, a short little description, you know, kind of when in doubt. Uh, what's neat about these is you can have the top five, the top 20, top 50, top 100. My favorite is probably the top 20. Uh, and then you can choose, you know, within our universe of coverage. Anybody that knows anything about volatility knows we have a huge universe of coverage. Uh, we have US, Canada, uh, Asia, Europe. And so what you'll do is, is you'll come through and you'll find whichever grouping you're most interested in. Uh, probably the most popular one is S&P. So within the S&P 500, Tesla has the highest options volume out of any of these names. It's actually more than two times higher than, than Apple. Um, so te you, you, as you get experience trading different groups, uh, you'll start to see kind of a trend um, where certain names are consistently kind of at the top of the grouping. Um, so in this case, we have Tesla, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon. And it's, it's very, it's very easy too. Cause let's say you only wanted to look at the top five names by volume in this trading session, boom, just click on five and there you go. We'd have Tesla, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, and AMD. So for that, um, list for our custom group that we just created, uh, which I'll show how, how to do again, because, um, we just had a few people join us. But I could just dot, jot down these tickers and I'll, and then we know, okay, Tesla, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, MZN, and then AMD. You know, these are our top five by volume. So then that gives me, you know, some interesting ideas. It doesn't mean I want to trade them, but it means that, you know, hey, at least there's a lot of action happening in these names. And again, you can just choose depending on which grouping you like best, um, where you want to run the scan. So then moving right along, another preset scan you have available to you is implied volatility mean versus 20-day historical volatility. So this is looking into the future versus the past. Um, IVX mean, this is going to be your IVX 30. So that's 30, uh, a calendar month. HV20 is 20 trading days, which is the same as a calendar month. So that's why these are apples to apples. And what's very interesting about this is you could see when, again, the future looks a lot different than the past. So if you look at Activision Blizzard, it's uh, historical volatility has been very low, you know, 3.25 over the past month. But looking ahead, um, it's implied volatility is very high. I mean, that's almost a 5x, five times higher, which means something's going on, which likely has to do, um, since I've, you know, studied Activision before, normally when we see these spikes in implied volatilities, it's because something's going on with the um, proposed Microsoft buyout of Activision. So if you like, if you're a buyout trader, if you're a trader that likes to kind of trade these discrepancies between past and present or past and future, um, this scan is priceless. Uh, it's beautiful. And you, we can scan for the top five, uh, again, and maybe get the top 20. So I could jot down ATVI as another top idea, because that's a huge discrepancy. Normally, uh, you know, I'll look at anything two or higher, right? So this would be my cutoff line, CME um, and higher. But at, at five, at 4.91, that's that's massive. So definitely jotting down ATVI. Another preset screen available to you is implied volatility historical range. So this is the 52-week range of implied volatility. And here's why that matters. IVX here in and of itself, it, I mean, it's great, but it's kind of like, okay, um, Abbott is at 22.32 for its implied volatility. So looking out 30 days from now, the, the implied volatility reading is 22. Well, I mean, what is that? Is that high? Is that low? What does it matter? And and that's what this uh, IVX historical range puts in perspective. Um, IVP is my favorite. IVP tells you what percentage of the time this name has been trading with a lower um, implied volatility, right? So I just clicked on it to um, put it in descending order. And we can see here, PEAK has traded at a low lower than this 97% of the time over the past year, which means this is significantly uh, statistically significant, right? This current IVX reading. On the other hand, ABT has traded um, at this level, 
you know, just around 53% of the time, time over the past year. So, you know, that's not really too significant for me. I like to see close to 100%, which is, you know, again, a statistical anomaly, and it means something's going on with this name. Uh, so I'm going to jot down peak, and I'm going to jot down, um, what's another one here, WBA. It's close to 100. And then uh, IVR is very similar, right? It tells you um, the current implied volatility, uh, where it's at relative to the past year, right? So the higher this number, the more statistically relevant you should pay attention to it. And then this is just putting it in numerical terms, just like a, uh, <clears throat> a stock 52-week range. We found that many people understand 52-week ranges with stocks intuitively. And so what we do here is we display that as a 52-week range. IVX changed from yesterday. I also really like this one because, you know, if you're looking to make a trade, you know, it's important to know where the action is now and in, in the present moment. And uh, so here I was scanning against the Russell 2000 stocks. What you'll find is these guys can be a, a very, very volatile in the Russell 2000. Uh, you can see, I mean, these changes day over day are just insane. Um, so I tend to you know, unless I'm doing a short-term scalping trade in the Russell 2000, I tend to run the scan against the, um, like an S&P or we already did S&P. Let's do, let's do the Dow. And we run it against the Dow. We see that uh, Cisco is at the top of the list here um, in terms of its IV exchange. So this positive means that it's going higher, meaning volatility is increasing in Cisco. This is one I've traded a lot, um, so it's probably worth jotting down. Cisco, INTC, I've traded a lot, which is Intel, um, Dow, and Microsoft. These are all, you know, over the the two threshold, two percentage point, um, or excuse me, two absolute points, and you know, decent um, in terms of percentage. Like Cisco's up, you know, twenty percent in terms of its implied vol um, over the last, you know day over day. So something's going on here, which merits um, discussion, right? Further investigation. So these are, you know, my uh, the most popular preset scans that are already built in for you. Uh, so I also want to show how to do custom scans. But, you know, here, when we come back, remember, we were, we just created this new group. And for anybody that just kind of came on, the way we did this is we, you know, just came in here, we put on new group, nine, one, three, stock monitor we used up all our characters and hit save and that's what created this group which was empty uh so then we ran these preset scans to get a couple ideas you know tesla is always a fun one um you know we have apple we we always have a few ideas uh, nvidia has been one we've written about a lot lately uh amazon had a lot of action uh amd you know arm holdings uh activision also showed a lot of action on its implied vol. Uh, let's see, Walgreens, Walgreens Boots Alliance, Cisco, Intel, and uh, Microsoft. So these, you know, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten interesting ideas um, that came just from running these preset scans. Now we can filter however we'd like uh, using this list. We can also add to this list by running, you know, other custom scans. So before filtering our target list, let's talk about how to run other custom scans to add to this list. And then um, I'll show you how to take away from the list and then sort accordingly, you know, to find trades. So for the default setting for stock monitor, you know, when you pull up just a basic stock monitor tab, which I'll do now for anybody that just joined. And I'll drag it all the way over. Uh, so we come here. We have our, our stock monitor tab, right? So this is just the plain vanilla. This is the default setting. What you have is you have symbol, company name, exchange, last price of the stock, the change in the stock um, in terms of absolute dollars, and the change in the stock in percentage terms, uh, the close, right? So yesterday's close. You have implied volatility, IVX 30. You have the implied volatility change. You have historical volatility 20. So again, you know, the way to think about this is compare implied volatility 30 to historical volatility 20. So I can just eyeball this and I could say, okay, 
while Apple's implied volatility is low relative to what its volatility has been, right? Because its IVX is below its historical volatility. Um, so what this means is that options prices are cheap relative to what they've been uh, in the past. Uh, and then Amgen is about equal. Uh, American Express implied volatility. This is the opposite of Apple. This means American Express's um, options prices are higher than what they've been historically over the past month. I haven't yet. Um, Boeing is about equal. Caterpillar. Good. Um, Good. Would Good. Be a bit higher. Fantastic. So Fantastic. This is how I you use that. These I was, I would... You know, to just quickly, you know, you can just eyeball it and say, oh, okay. If I wanted to buy options, I should be buying an Apple. If I wanted to sell, I could be selling American Express because premiums would be inflated. So this is one of my favorite things to do. Just kind of go down this list and eyeball IVX versus um, HV20. Options volume. So this is how many contracts have traded today. Uh, we saw that kind of here when we had that, ran that screen. Um, but this is within the entire group, right? So we're looking at all names within uh, a specific group right the dow so that's why um you see everything here within the dow but we could we don't have to do the dow uh we could use any of our custom groups which we're building as we speak and we can also use any of our um, defaults that we have again massive universe all etfs all us stocks brazil canadian i mean really uh the world is your oyster when you want to run um any of these scans within i have a live so continuing uh, right to left here, we also have as part of your default setting, call option volume, put option volume. This is another thing I like to eyeball, um, like kind of throughout the day, right? I like to know, okay, when I see a heavy, heavy skew towards put or towards call, typically I'll look a little bit deeper, right? Apple looks equal, Amgen equal, American Express. You know, this one kind of stands out Boeing. We have a lot more call volume. Uh, well, 2x the call volume as put volume so i might jot down boeing ba uh, and i'll show a shortcut on how to add that to our list in a second uh let's see rolling right along where's there other discrepancies just eyeballing what's this one intel okay so i'll put a check mark by intel because that's already in our list we have a lot more call options you know being um traded than puts so maybe there's signs of life in that tech giant. Uh, Microsoft, same thing. A lot of calls versus puts. Uh, so it seems like big tech is is getting some action. Um, and of course, we already have them in our list, which is great because we already you know ran these scans. Uh, then we have call open interest, put open interest. You know, so this is overall option open interest. This is all contracts. Uh, and then this is call, and then this is put. So you can also look here, and you'd say, all right. Well, do tra our traders heavily overweight one way or the other in terms of total open interest? Because, yeah, this is volume today, but what about, you know, in totality, right? And so we could see for Walt Disney, we have a lot more calls piling up um, than puts, right? Uh, so people, traders perhaps betting on a turnaround, maybe selling covered calls against their shares to lock in some income. Uh, here in Intel, we have a much bigger call option position building. So really from this custom tab, this is the default setting for the custom tab. And we created and added these columns in here as your default because we feel like these are, are you know, kind of the, the easiest to understand, but also very, very valuable and very useful that you can use. And you can use these like against any group. So before we do that, um, we said Boeing was interesting, right? So here's the shortcut to add to our our you know, shorthand trading, our custom trading list. So you put a check mark by the name you're interested in. Uh, we already had those other ones that I mentioned, uh, except Disney. So if we go here and we get Boeing and Disney, we say, hey, you know, these are worth further investigation. What we do is you click on them, hit this plus sign, and then you go to the group that um, you'd like to add them to, right? So let's go here and we'll add to our stock monitor group. And voila, those will be added to the stock monitor group, right? So now we have Boeing and we have Disney. And this is why I like to have a couple different tabs open because I can screen, do my screens over here. I can add to the group. And then my custom group tab is kind of separate over here. Um, so that's kind of how I like to do it. But feel free to um, kind of manipulate as you desire so this is the dow again you could run this against anything all u.s stocks european stocks uh, indian stocks uh, the oslo exchange russell 2000 
right? So here's the Russell. And then from here, um, you can toggle, right? You could say, all right, well, what name uh, is having the best performance today within the Russell 2000? And that's Helen of Troy. Um, what name is having the worst, you know, and Russell 2000 has a lot uh, and a lot of them are e-liquid. So you, you might have to scroll down and say, okay, well, MedPace is down 14 uh point two three dollars today which is about six percent what's going on with med pace right um so you know you're able to go into ascending and descending order on all of these columns which is very nice uh so another cool thing that you could do um, from this view is you can run um, custom screens from this view so you could say all right now we're within the s p 500 now we want to know where implied volatility is breaking out, right? So th this would mean that uh, options premiums are getting more expensive. So if you're looking to maybe sell premiums, sell options, you might want uh, implied volatility is breaking out. And you could say, I'm a, I'm a short-term trader, I'm an intermediate term trader, I'm a long-term trader. Like I wanna look at those different time periods. So for me, we'll say IVX 30, that's the most popular. And we could say, okay, over the past month, you know, where has implied volatility gone up? Let's see if something shows up for 20%, you know, 20%. Well, here we go. Um, so these names are now names with implied volatilities that have had a 20% increase over the past month. So if you're looking to potentially sell options, these would be juicy premiums, um, you know, and as I scroll through it, you know, what I'm always looking for is a name that's already on our list from previous scans. And here we go. You know, Walgreens Boots Alliance is, um, has been on our list a couple of times now. So two check marks there. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could look at collapsing implied volatility. So you could say, hey, I want to buy options and I want to get a cheap price. So where has IVX collapsed by 20%? And hit apply. And you could see um, where that's applied within the S&P 500. The other thing you could do is you could say, I want to look at high call volume over the past 60 days, right? Where are traders acquire, where are traders building large positions, you know, with calls? And, you know, here's our list with large call volume, right? Doesn't mean they're right, but that means that's, these are the names where there's been a huge uh, surge in uh, put volume or call volume, excuse me. Now let's say, all right, well, over the past 120 days, um, where, you know, so the past half year, where have traders been amassing uh, put volume? Right. Um, and then that is so UDR showed up for both um, put and call. So I'm going to jot down UDR. I'm going to add this to our custom list here. Because that showed up for both high and call and high put. And then you could do highest call to put ratio. So, you know, here, this is where, you know, we looked at it. Um, on the default setting, right? Because that's the default setting within the, the stock monitor. But <clears throat> this is where you would see it in terms of the ratio, right? This is the call to put ratio. Um, so here's our, our biggest one. Uh, let's see what that one was. Uh, DTE has a tremendous amount of traders buying calls instead of puts, um, which is very interesting. I'm not really familiar with that name. In Invitation Homes, uh, Ameriprise Financial, Duke Energy Corning is one that we've done before. So let me do Corning and then DTE, right? So let's add these to our group. So again, this is all just about getting a couple, you know, ideas per scan, uh, per screen uh, to add to our list. And then highest put to call ratio. So this is the um, exact opposite. So here we go. Scroll over here. And then we could, uh, our top name at 132.83 is Apathenol and then Aptive. I've traded Aptive before and PSA. Uh, I'm not as familiar with Aptenol, so I'll just add a couple names. And then here we go. So now as we look at our custom group, like we have a very respectable due diligence list here of names that we can further screen for. And that all came from running our uh, preset scans and then running custom screens against uh, different groups of stocks that, that we like trading. Again, mainly S&P uh, and Dow, but, but you have that whole universe um, available to you. Now, here's where it gets really cool too. So what we can do from this custom tab is we can customize it further. Uh, first of all, 
um, what we can do is you can add groups from files. So if you have, as long as it's in CSV format in Excel or Notepad, um, WordPad, whatever, just fit, save it as a CSV. You can open that file, add it to the groups, you know, that you're um, studying and just click add. And what that will do is that'll take your, your kind of your, your cheat sheet that you might have on your computer and it will add it to a custom list. So that's another new feature that we've added. Uh, the other thing we could do, um, you can do is you can edit tabs now. So this is stock monitor and we could just say default, right? So that's our, our stock monitor default. Um, but here, this stock monitor um, that I prepared, let's see, this looks like it's the default as well. And then here, okay, cool. So here's where I started customizing the custom tab um, and drilling deeper, right? So you can see this looks, this interface looks different. Those columns look different than our, um, our preset columns here, right? The default. So what I did is I was here and I came in and I hit this uh, gear icon. And so with this gear icon, this will take you to column settings. And what's neat about this is you can do, you can apply any of these or unapply any of these per stock monitor screen. So what I did here is you just hit this little arrow, drop down menu pops up. And I said, I want to know the company name. I want to know the exchange and I want to know the quote time. And then under stock price, I said, I want to know intraday price the previous day. And I want to know 52 week range. And then under uh, implied volatility, I mentioned, I want to see everything that has to do with a seven, uh, seven day implied vol. Um, actually, let me do this. Let's keep this very short term. So let's eliminate 30. Let's eliminate 90. And what we're doing is, is we're creating a scan that's very short term in nature. So as a, if I was doing a short term trade, you know, I'd be interested in anything less than a month. So I want to see all implied volatility information um, that's less than a month. And then I don't want to see anything else. I don't want to see any historical volatility, uh, any of the options data, right? Because with historical volatility, you can do the same thing. With options, what's available to you is volume and open interest. Fundamentals, what's available to you is industry, market cap, dividend amount, dividend date, frequency, yield, shares outstanding, earnings per share, and price to earnings ratio. And then we have uh, correlations, right? So if you like to monitor correlations between your favorite names, uh, in the market, you can do so. And then if you want to measure volatility between your favorite names in the market, you can do that. If you're a short-term trader, uh, let, like, let's say we're running this short-term screen, why not? Let's figure out what, um, these short-term correlations are here and here. And so now what we have is, is again, something that's very short-term in nature. Let's say we don't really care about the quote name anymore. We don't really care about the exchange. We, we mainly just want to know the company name uh we want to know it's uh pricing here and then we want to know these short-term features now you can hit apply which i like to do because that saves for this this tab the specific tab or you could do apply and save as default um which would mean every stock monitor tab you pulled up would, would just have these preset settings so if you fall into a rhythm and you really find a custom view you like you can do apply, apply and save as default but in general when i'm running these custom tabs i like to just hit apply uh, and then I just keep multiple tabs going. So you can see, here we go. We've got our, our symbol, our name, our last price, open, high, low, uh, change, change since open. Uh, and then here are, uh, here's our stock volume, right? And here's our, uh, the sum of all trades reported today. So this is giving you like very granular detail on um, the fundamentals of the stock. We've got the bid, the ask, the close the tremendous amount of data. Here's our 52 week high, 52 week lows. The date in which those highs and those lows uh, happen, right? Which is also nice. So you know exactly when that happened. And then as we keep going over, we have our uh, implied volatility readings, right? So we've got um, all of these short-term IVXs that we wanted. And it, what, what this will do when you click on IVX seven, for an example, not only will you give it the, it will give you the seven day implied volatility. So this is volatility looking out seven days from now. Um, it'll also tell you the change, right? Day over day in terms of absolute dollar, you know, absolute numbers and then percentage terms. It will tell you the change since open. So when you click on an IVX, whether that's seven, 14, 30 or 21, it's going to give you everything related to that um, IVX, right? And here we see the same for um, IVX 14, IVX 21, correlation. So we can say, all right, well, what names have the highest or lowest correlation with the market 
um, today from this list, right? So that would be, come on over, uh, Microsoft. Microsoft is, is highly correlated. When we look out, um, we look back at the last 10 days. We could also look at our beta, right? So what's, you know, where's volatility? Where are we moving in the market? Where are we not? 2.06. So Microsoft's been two times more volatile than the S&P 500. So Microsoft has some, a lot of interesting things going on. And, and we could see that we didn't really have a preconceived notion of that when we came in um, to today's session. We just started running these scans and Microsoft, um, you know, kept showing up. Right. So if I hadn't added it to the list, this would be a great time uh, to do so. So um, that's on one custom scan I wanted to show. The other thing you could do. And again, if, if that looks too busy, you could just come into your column settings and you could just delete uh, whatever you don't want. For an example, on this tab, all I did was implied volatilities, right? So there's no stock price. There's nothing. All I'm looking at is the various implied volatilities within, uh, in this case, within the Dow, right? Um, but we could also run this screen and look at the implied volatilities within our... You guessed it, custom group, right? So now all of a sudden I've created this custom scan only looking at IVXs and we've applied this to this interesting group, right, of names. So we could say, okay, from this trading group we've been building, who has the highest IVX seven, for an example, right? So looking out in the next seven days, who's likely to be the most volatile? And that's UDR, which showed up as traders amassing all kinds of positions, uh, calls and puts. And then we go down, you know, Tesla, no surprise, AMD, NVIDIA. Uh, on the other hand, we could say, well, looking out 30 days, who's got the highest implied volatility? And it's still UDR, Tesla, AMD, NVIDIA, Walgreens. Those are like the top five. Um, and then so on and so forth. So what's really cool is, is as you find different column settings that you like, you can then apply them to your trading list. Um, so I'll show you how to do that on one more i believe i set up yeah so the same here with historical volatility right so if you if you wanted to look in the past and say let's run the screen against our our hit list here you know who's got the highest historical volatility so who's been volatile lately right um tesla amd intel walgreens uh that's you know hv20 right so that's the last month or so uh but then we could say well who's been the most volatile over the past half a year and that's been Activision Blizzard, right? As this um, as this uh, buyout with Microsoft kind of plays out. So again, depending on if you're a short-term trader or if you're a long-term trader, you can just create these scans super easily with a couple clicks of the mouse um, and then filter accordingly. And then here we have, I did uh, fundamentals. So one question we had is, well, how do I do a screen against fundamentals? And the way you would do that is you would pull up a stock monitor tab You'd go here to column settings and you would just click anything to do with fundamentals, right? So in this case, I did general information on the stock, which is name, exchange, quote time. And then I did uh, fundamentals, right? Industry, market cap, dividend amount, everything else. Then I hit apply. I didn't do anything else. I didn't do anything with implied volatility. Uh, I didn't do anything with stock price. All I did was, um, you know, anything that had to do with fundamentals hit apply. So now you could say, all right, from this custom list that I've been building today uh, on this Thursday, um, what am I looking at? You know, what are these names? What are these companies? Um, and this is, and do they pay dividends? And when do they pay dividends? And so you can run this fundamental screen, which I think is really nice because uh, it tells you their industry, their market cap, their dividend amount, dividend day. You could say, well, who pays the highest dividend uh, in absolute terms? Um, and that is public storage. Uh, you know, and so this is a really, really neat way uh, to screen as well. So uh, now we have our, our custom list here. And again, you could sort any of these in ascending, descending. You could also, this is our default view. But remember, you can add anything you want to that. You could take anything you want away from this right? To shrink it down. You can also shrink down this list. You could say, well, you know, um, I, I'm not really familiar with PSA. Disney kind of scares me. And uh, UDR, there's a big position building one way or another, but I'm just not familiar with the stock. You can click those three and remove, right? So now you whittle down this list a little bit more. If you want to drill down deeper on a name, you could just click on it. 
and that's going to bring you to a tab. Uh, you can see I was already looking at Walgreens here. You could have two tabs open at once. Like for an example, um, here on this tab, we could be looking at the chart. You know, and then on this tab, we could be looking at um, the fundamentals. Uh, but if I just go back to chart view, I'm just going to make this easy so we can minimize some of these tabs. Um, so when you pull up a name, you'll see fundamentals here on the left, right? Which is a lot of what you saw on the screener. And then you'll see R, what we feel like is most important, right? The fields, implied volatility, historical volatility, price, high, low, close. Um, you can always add to this just by going here and clicking anything that's red uh, to green. You can apply or save as default. So just apply for the session. So there we go. Beta has been added. Uh, over here, we have a chart uh, on the right. What's cool about this chart within the stock monitor is you get uh, up to five years worth of data on um, stock price, right? This is the spot price in blue. So Walgreens has really been in a downtrend um, for the past five years. Overall, then you have implied volatility in green right here. So we can see IVX uh, has been going higher as Walgreens has been going lower. Look at that, kind of like an alligator mouth. And then um, historical volatility, which is an orange. So you get five years worth of this data, like spot price data by virtue of being a subscriber. And then you can go as low as um, 24 hours in one day, right? You can see volume. Here's the volume bars uh, down here right? Um, they show how much volume is happening in a given day. So you can get pretty granular. I like the, I like trades that play out within like two to six months. So I like this three month or six month chart. Uh, my key takeaway here would be we have implied volatility going higher. We have Walgreens going lower. It's coming up high, going low. Uh, if I, if I wanted to go long, I would sell a put because we have this, this uptrend in implied vol. Um, we have Walgreens kind of hitting this uh, support level. So if we drew that out, now we have Walgreens here hitting what could serve as support. I'd have to do a little bit more research, but you know maybe this is a good long-term support level uh, to sell to sell a put at. And if I did sell a put, uh, my premium would be nice and juicy because we have this um, we have this uptrend in implied vault which we know we have because we just saw that um, with our screens that we ran, right? So you could do all sorts of things. I'll show in next Tuesday how to really play with these charts and, and draw on them um, and play Picasso. But these are some of the key takeaways just from looking at, you know, in, in two minutes or less, sizing up this chart. Other cool things you could do here, um, you can isolate implied volatility right? So this is just implied volatility. And then you can add technical indicators uh, to uh, implied volatility, right? Which is super unique because most of the time when you use technical indicators, you're using them on price. But the thing is, is that implied volatility impacts price and impacts pricing for options. So what we see here is that, you know, even though Walgreens has this elevated uh, implied volatility, it's still within the upper Bollinger Band. So that doesn't mean implied volatility has to go lower. Um, so if I'm patient, there's a chance I can get an even better price if implied volatility goes up, if I want to sell this put option. On the other hand, on the RSI, you know, this is hovering around, um, you know, highs, but it still hasn't turned lower. So again, maybe I should wait a couple of days um, before putting on this trade, um, before selling a put. So those are just, again, let's be on the scope of, of what we have time for today, but those are some key takeaways. I would say, okay, I ran the scan. I got a bunch of names. I clicked on a name to dig deeper. Um, and this looks like it could be a good time to, to sell a put, you know, sometime maybe today or tomorrow. And then you would come here to the options chain and you'd say, all right, well, what, you know, what put should I sell? All right. And this is where the options chain comes in valuable. Like I said, I like trades that play out, you know, two to three months. So if I went out, say we went out two months, right? And we go to this 1117 expiration. So November 17th. And I say, all right, I think this 2250 is a good long-term support level. Let's say in theory, you know, what, how do I put on this trade and should I put on this trade? So I'd click on this calculator. Um, you could play market maker, you know, and you can put in all these different inputs to calculate, you know, pricing. Um, but what I like when I'm looking at doing a specific trade is probability calculator. And I want to say, if I sell this put, what's the likelihood I'm going to be put, right? So what's the likelihood Walgreens would be at 2250 or below 2250, sorry, 
um, on November 17th. I'm also saying, well, if I'm bullish, well, maybe I should buy a call option, right? Instead of selling a put. So, you know, in that case, I could buy this call option here, the 25 for, for 26 cents, right? 26 bucks a contract. So maybe I should do that. Let's see. So what this tells me is there's a 66, there's a 60% chance Walgreens will below, be below 2250. So what that means is I'll sell this put for a buck 82, but I'll be put, right? Uh, chances are I'll be put, 60% chance I'll be put. On the other hand, if I buy this call option for 26 bucks, there's only a 17% chance uh, Walgreens will end up above that price, that 25. So that's not a good call option to buy either. So I could say, well, you know, in reality, if I could pay 22.50 or if I buy at 22.50, I'm paid, let's say a buck 80, really my cost basis, let's just say is 21 for, for simple numbers. So what's the likelihood that Walgreens will close below 21? And, and in which case I'd be unprofitable on the trade. And there's only a 42% chance that'll happen. So I could still be profitable even if I'm put um, based on the premium I'm earned. And the reason is, is these put premiums are elevated because of the elevated implied volatility. So that's how all of this like plays together for a, a tradable action plan. Uh, if I wanted to be more conservative and say, well, what if I sold the $20 strike and I got $65 per contract, right? Hit confirm. There's only a 30% chance I'd be put, right? Um, and then, but we know that it doesn't make any sense still to buy the call option. So that's a pretty good trade. You know, I could, I basically have to decide, do I want to be a bit more conservative and sell the 20 and make $65? Or do I want to be a bit more aggressive uh, knowing I'll probably get put, but I could still be up on the trade because I'm earning a buck 82 per share, a dollar 82 or $182 a contract, right? So then what would happen is I would take that trade, all right, it's November 17th, 2023, and to bring it full circle, I'd come to the PL calculator. I would type in WBA. This would pull up our Walgreens Puts Alliance. I'd go to the specific um, you know, trade we're looking at here, which was the 2250. That'll populate behind me. And then on the PL calc, what's great about this is it just puts everything out so cleanly. Uh, so this tells me if Walgreens goes to what stock price, what my PL looks like. This shows me here the blue line is my break even. Uh, the green is where we're profitable. You know, this is the underlying share price for Walgreens. And then the red shows me where we're unprofitable, right? Um, obviously, if I'm selling the put, I'm profitable if Walgreens goes higher. Uh, here is our action to take. So this is what I would put in with my broker, right? I would sell to open the November 17, 2250 put for a buck 78. Let's say my broker, broker gets me a better price. I could say, hey, I actually got a buck 90 per share. This tells me the implied volatility, the delta, the gamma. They had in Vega, so I'll earn, you know, 78 cents, uh, you know, uh, 0.78 a day as this thing decays, hopefully, into um, expiration mode. Other things you could do is you could say, well, you know, options markets don't exist in a vacuum. What happens if volatility goes up 10% between now and expiration, 57 days from now? Uh, and then what would this trade look like, you know, as we get closer to expiration, let's say October 25th, we're only 23 days away and volatility has gone up by... 15%, right? So you can play all these different scenarios on the on the PL calculator. What you can also do is if you decide to change your mind and you say, well, wait a minute, I don't want to be bullish anymore. I want to be bear. I want to be bearish. I want to buy a put. All you have to do is click on the action. You can change the expiration. You can change the strike. Um, you could change this to a call instead of a put. You change the price. Uh, you can also do that here. You can invert and this will take your trade and it will flip it, you know, buy sell. But in general, you know, this would be an interesting trade for me to make. Like I've traded Walgreens a lot in the past. It showed up on multiple screens. The probabilities are on our side. And the PL calculator shows me what my overall risk reward is, which I'm comfortable with. Um, so this would like be a great hypothetical trade. So that's how we take, you know, in 50 minutes or less, like that's how we create scans, run scans, find an interesting trade, put it through our filters, and then boom, we'd execute it with our broker and make. You know, if I did this, I'd make, uh, you know, $178 per contract. Of course, you could trade as many contracts as you want, you know, as, or as you feel comfortable with. So if I did 10, of course, that'd be 10 times that income. Um, and that'd be a nice little trade. So that is what I wanted to cover today, right? Just to recap, because um, we did have people kind of uh, bouncing in uh, kind of throughout the session. What we did is we created this uh, new stock group here, right? New group. We typed it in, X, Y, Z, hit save. And then we ran these preset scans, right? Volume, 
uh, IVX mean versus 20 day historical volatility, which is future versus past. Implied volatility historical range, right? The 52 week range. Are we high? Are we low? And IVX change from yesterday, you know, where's the action at today? And then we went to custom, came here, uh, and we played around with the column settings that we liked, right? And we and we had a few different tabs that each had different, you know, column settings. Then we created this custom, we started looking at this custom group and we started filtering, you know, by uh, price and by implied volatility. And then we dug deeper on um, Walgreens. We just clicked on that. That brought us here. And then we analyzed a hypothetical trade uh, for Walgreens. So in order to do all of this, of course, you do need to be a um, high volatility user. It's super easy. Just uh, come here, high volatility options. So you have the choice between options which I did today, futures, if you like futures or API. API is great if you need a bunch of data to do some back testing on, you know, for one of your strategies or multiple strategies. But here you would just do have a live options and bring you here. Um, cheapest is always annual. And then you can do a free trial um, for uh, for any of these. What I used is a pro real-time account. So everything was updating in real time as we were together today. Um, sentiment analyzer is available to use spread scanner, PL cap. These are like the, the meaty type tools that we tend to dive into on these webinar sessions because they, you know, require a little bit of, um, they're, they're so powerful. They require a session onto themselves. Uh, today we kind of stayed in the IVX, um, here in the option chain and the stock monitor, uh, I've alive advanced doesn't have the spread scanner. So if you enjoy trading spreads, you definitely want to do pro real time. And then I've all I basic doesn't have the PL calc and it doesn't have the spread scanner. So what I just showed in the PL calc would not be available on basic. That's the distinction there. And I'll put this in the chat just in case we have uh, that here. So great. Um, any questions for me? Uh, let's see here. Somebody said no audio, but was everybody able to hear me? I hope so. Uh, throughout that session, we will uh, send out a recording of this um, as well. So everybody has it uh, via email um, once we have a time to edit it. But I just want to make sure audio was okay. Okay, great. I just want to make sure after all of that, that you guys could hear me. Okay, great. Fantastic. Well, um, any questions here or I'm going to do support at iVolatility.com. Um, please, you know, any questions or feedback like we, you know, how did, did you enjoy today? You know, we always strive to add value in these sessions um, to show you how to harness the power of iVol Live to apply it to your to your actual trading. So um, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's session on uh, custom scans. And we will see you next Tuesday for um, charts and technical analysis within Eyeball Live. So I'll do a much deeper dive like what I showed on um, Walgreens Boots Alliance. I'll do a much, much deeper dive uh, on that next Tuesday on the uh, on the charts. Well, all right. Well, if there's no questions for me, thank you guys for attending. Uh, it was my pleasure. And until next time, happy trading. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate the kind words. Yep. Thanks, Carl.